Hey there, welcome to Papercraft Panda. My name is Misty, I'm a self-taught bookbinder, and through my blog and website, I teach you how to create your own handmade books at home as well. So today's tutorial is gonna focus on a Japanese stab binding, and we teach you how to make a notebook using loose leaf paper. So this is a Japanese stab bound notebook. This is the one that I created and it features the hemp leaf binding pattern. So this pattern is really nice for structure and stability. And since I'll be using this book on the go, it's perfect for my own use. Now, I also added a bow in the front for closure. You don't have to add a bow in the front. I just thought it kind of went with the aesthetic of my book overall. But if you open it up, you can see we've got all of this great, you know, loose leaf paper and everyone can find loose leaf paper. And I think that's the best thing about this book is that if you have loose leaf paper laying around the house, this single sheet binding method can help you. So if you wanna learn how to make this book, go ahead and watch the tutorial. And if you like what you see, if anything in this tutorial helps you, please give me a like and subscribe. It really helps tell Google that my stuff is worth sharing with others and I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Okay, I'm gonna let you get to it. Thank you so much for stopping by. Enjoy the video. In today's tutorial, I wanna show you how to make this stab bound notebook full of loose leaf paper. It's an incredibly affordable option and you can use these notebooks for anything you want. I love to use mine for travel and that's why it's featuring a Paris theme. So let's jump into it. Here are the materials that you're gonna need. Go ahead and pause here, write everything down, come back, and then let's get started. So before jumping into it, I just want to show you a few of the tools that we're going to be using. So it's all of your standard tools, but I want to walk you through it. First, we're going to have a 12 to 18 inch ruler, and then I use these spacers half inch, quarter inch, and eighth inch. And then of course, we've got a good pair of scissors, a retractable Ulfa knife, mine has a safety lock, a heavy duty awl like this one, a light duty awl like this one, it's got tapered as well. And then we've got the Japanese screw punch, which you're going to use to make the holes in your paper. So this Japanese screw punch has a bit on the end, as you could see, and those bits look something like this. So the bits are anywhere from two millimeter up to four and five millimeter. And for this, we're going to use the three millimeter bit. Next up, a set of pliers, just in case your needle gets hard to move. They're not necessary. This is a corner jig. It helps me make my corners perfectly. And then I've got a large and a small paste brush. Each of those sizes are necessary to make the covers. And then we've got our bone folder, of course, two clips, mine are three quarter inch binder clips. And then we've got a needle here, binding needle, a pencil, of course, super helpful. This heavy duty clamp, just in case you might need it. And I use this rubber brayer to help press my boards. So let's jump into prepping materials. I'm going to be using this reinforced college ruled filler paper. The package itself has a hundred sheets. I'm going to use about 51 of them. And after I take them out, I'm going to cut them down so they are the size that we're looking for. And you can kind of see that reinforced edge. It's not necessary, but it sure is nice if you want to make sure that things are a little more stable. Okay, next up, we're going to be looking at one of my cover paper options. This is the primary cover paper. It's got this beautiful Parisian design, and this is called a Florentine paper. This design here is actually printed in Italy on beautiful ivory laid paper. This is gonna be our end papers. So this gets glued on the inside of the cover for each of the covers. And I chose this because it's a really nice, not too thick, 110 GSM paper, and it matches the colors perfectly. And then of course, we're gonna look at our book board. So for this, we want two full size sheets. Each of these are eight and a half by five and three quarter. And then this other sheet, I'm gonna take two pieces out of it, just like that. Each of the two pieces will be one inch wide by eight and a half tall and look something like this. So the rest of it I'm gonna set aside, but then these two pieces combined with the two larger boards make each of the covers. So this is what the cover kind of looks like when you construct it together. And the other cover, so this is the front or back, they're gonna be basically the exact same layout and design. All right. Now, last but not least, this beautiful Laval book cloth. It's basically a flocked velvet or velour cloth in deep, deep black. I thought it added a bit of luxury and I love the texture. So this black book cloth, I'm going to cut it into two small pieces because this will actually cover those two small pieces of bookboard. And if I zoom it in here, you can really see that texture. I love it so much. I think it's going to stand out really well against the thread that I'll be using. 
Okay, so let's jump into the cover creation process. Now for this, I wanted to make a really quick illustration to show you what this whole thing is going to look like. So each of the small pieces will connect to each of the larger pieces. And we're going to start with that black book cloth first and a piece of the cover paper that has the Paris design. And I'm going to turn the black book cloth over so it's face down. And then I'll be applying a little bit of glue to the right edge. I'm going to grab my small paste brush, which works really well for this, and just apply a very thin layer of glue here to the edge. Now once I get that layer of glue on it's time to take the cover paper so this is the ivory laid Florentine print and just lay it on top so they're about an eighth of an inch overlapped. Now that needs to press for a while and then once it is pressed it's time for us to go ahead and put some boards down on it. So first I'm going to start with the thinner board, the smaller one, apply a layer of glue to the back, get it in place and then that becomes my anchoring point so I can use my spacer to make sure there's a quarter of an inch between the two boards and then I'm going to apply some PVA to the back of the larger board using my large paste brush so this paste brush is one and three quarter inches around and that makes it a lot easier to get a nice thin layer of PVA. So I'm using my brayer to press out the bubbles on both sides and then it's time to mark these corners and to cut them. This is a process that I talk about in depth in my case binding tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and leave the link to the case binding tutorial below. There are several videos in that tutorial that take you through, you know, measuring and marking corners, um, cutting them away, and then of course turning them so that they look really nice. If you are using a print that has, you know, images on it, or there's an orientation to your print, make sure that you reverse that for the back cover. So it would be terrible if you had the back cover finished and it was completely upside down. So remember that the back cover is inverted to the front. And if you can take that into consideration, you're going to do great. Okay, we're just about finished with the back cover here and it's time for us to press both of these covers so you want to put them under some weight with some newsprint or some extra computer paper between them like kind of like layers and put them under that weight for around 20 minutes to several hours now once mine are finished drying it's time for me to go ahead and add my ribbon closure so to do that i'm going to go ahead and just mark around just above center on the front cover and then i'm going to use that as a guide for the back cover So here we are, I've got that 110 GSM end paper, it's cut to size and all I really need to do is just add this glue to the back and then once I get the glue in place, it's time for me to go ahead and turn it over, lay it on the board so there's about an eighth of an inch around each edge. Just make sure when you are forming the hinge with your bone folder that you do so while the paper is still wet. So when the water you know, penetrates the paper, it expands those fibers and it gives the paper just enough flexibility for you to work it down into that gap where the hinge is. Now when you're all done, it's time for us to go ahead and pierce our sewing stations. This is an entire event in and of itself because the sewing stations have to be pierced in our paper and in our covers. To make sure that we get those stations pierced in the exact same location across the board, we're going to create this template. 
Now I wanna show you these illustrations that I created. The first one here shows you where the first row of st sewing stations are at. And the second one here shows you where the second row is at. So feel free to pause and write these down if it's helpful for you and then come on back. I'm gonna go ahead and lay it on top of my stack of paper, clip it using my binder clip so it stays in position, and then use my Japanese screw punch to go ahead and get these holes created. Now, even though this paper is very thin, it's not super thick paper, I still have to go through about I would say 10 pages and then I have to lift it up and continue through the next set of 10 pages. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and punch the same holes in our cover boards. Starting with the front cover, I'm gonna go ahead and lay the template on top and clip it using my two binder clips. Take my heavy duty awl, and I'm gonna go ahead and press through the board until I can feel the tip of the awl hit the self-healing mat below. Once we get the final hole punched through, if you turn the board over, you can actually see tiny pinholes in the end paper where the awl met the paper before it hit the self-healing mat. And that's gonna really help us as we use the tapered awl to go through here and just widen these holes a little bit more. Once I get these opened up from this direction, I can grab the light duty tapered awl and just press it through until about uh, around a 3 eighths of an inch of the tip of the awl appears on the other side. Once we get the front cover done, we're gonna actually sandwich it on top of the back cover just like this, and then move the heavy duty awl through the existing holes on the front cover so that it makes little pin pricks on the end papers of the back cover. Now that we've got the holes in place, it's time for us to go ahead and do the fun part. We're gonna sew the hemp leaf pattern. To do this, I created another illustration for you. These are the sewing stations we referenced earlier and their letters, so you know exactly which one I'm talking about as I'm walking you through these steps. Okay, so we're going to split the book into two different halves. You'll run the needle through station 2A of the first half of the paper, pull until there's about 3 to 4 inches of thread remaining, and then run your needle through 2A of the front cover. Pull, careful not to move all the, the thread all the way through, then loop the needle under the book and go through station 2A of the back cover, and then move through station 2A for the bottom half of the paper. Once you move through the bottom half of the paper, go ahead and move the needle through 2A of the top half. So you're going to exit through the front cover. Pull the thread so that it's tight. This is what connects the two pieces of the book together and you should have a little bit of that tail sticking on the right side right there. Okay, so now we're gonna move into station 3A. Come up through station 2B, and then move back into 3A again. From here, you're gonna move around the spine and back through 3A and then you're gonna come up through station 3B. Now move back into station 3A. And from here, you're gonna come up through station four. Move back through station 3B, wrap around the spine and back into 3B. From here, you'll come back up through station four. Sorry, it went a little off camera here. But we're back up through station four. Then you're gonna wrap around the spine and come back up through station four again. From here, you'll wrap around the head and back up through station four. Once you've tightened your thread, move the needle back into station 3A. Then move around the back of the book and come up through station 2A. There we go. Now enter in station 2B, wrap around the spine, and back into 2B. From this point, come back up through station 2A, 
Move the needle into station 1B. From here, we'll wrap around the spine and back into 1B. Then come back up through station 2A and take your needle into station 1A. Now wrap around the spine and back into 1A. Now go ahead and come up through station 1B, just like that, and return into 1A, then wrap around the tail and back into 1A. Now we're going to go ahead, once it's tight, we're going to flip the book over and we want to return our needle into station 2A, right where we began. But before we can do that, we need to open the book to the halfway point, find that excess thread, then feed the needle through just like that. Tie it off, clip with the scissors, and your book is complete. Now, if you have any problems with that last step, moving the needle through 2A into the center of the book, it can be tough sometimes, especially if the binding is tight on the left side. So I do recommend just practice on some paper first before you start working with book board. Okay, so here's my finished book. Now, I didn't go crazy with a bunch of extras and I didn't decorate the cover a whole lot because I really want the focus to be on this hemp leaf pattern. Of course, I love this bow on the right side. It adds a touch of femininity that I think goes really well with the fashion aspect of the cover. The best part of this book, though, is the paper. It's extremely light, it's easy to turn, and best of all, it's incredibly cost-effective. So if you know someone who's looking for an awesome activity to try, this might be the one to share with them. I would appreciate your recommendation as always. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, let me know in the comments. And if you have any other ideas or things you'd like to learn, let me know those too. I'd be more than happy to make a video for you. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching and take care.